Over the years, I have read over a hundred books, ranging from productivity tips, fantasy, thrillers. However, I wanted to condense it down into three books that I feel have changed my life, from the way I approach studying to how I decided to create a YouTube channel. These are the books I come back to when times get tough, and these are the books I tell people to read when they are starting on their journey to becoming more wise as a student. So hi, I'm Charlotte Frasa, a third year PhD student in computational neuroscience, and today I really want to introduce you to three books that have really changed the way that I approach studying, and how I manage my study routine. So let's get straight into it. So the first book I want to talk about is the book Show Your Work from Austin Kleon. And this is a book in a series. So this is maybe one of the smallest books I've read and that's on this list, but I think it really made a deep impression on me. So if you have to write a lot of essays, you have big projects or you have extensive hobbies and you really want to show part of it, but you're kind of nervous and you don't know which part to show, I think this is a really good book to start with. Because I think nowadays in our economy, a lot of the part on, of the economy is geared towards entertainment. And I wish we would go a little bit more towards creativity and producing new ideas. And I think this book has really changed the way I view entertainment and changed the way I view creativity as a whole. So there are three lessons that I learned from the book. So the first one is to steal good ideas. And this doesn't mean you got to go around plagiarizing everything you see. Of course, give credit where credit is due. But one main message of the book is that at the end of the copy, you will find yourself. And I personally really like that. I think when we are starting as students in our creative journey or on our learning journey, there's so much we still have to incorporate. And I think one of the best and fastest ways to do this is to follow masters that you really like. So for example, if you have a professor that you really like their research, I think it's okay to really dedicatedly first follow the protocol they have written and then afterwards think about how you can improve the idea. And also one of the big things that he says is that you are usually not able to create an exact copy of the idea you're trying to copy, so to say. By trying to copy an idea, you can kind of find your own style doing that. And one thing that really helped me doing this is to create a second brain, which I also talked about in this video, but that's really to collect a lot of ideas that you come across cross and try to recombine them in such a way that it's kind of novel and new and creative. So the second tip that I got from the book is to learn in front of others. This has really changed the way I approach creativity because I used to think that you could only show certain parts of your work when it was in the final end stage. But actually by showing your work in front of others, there are a lot of benefits. One of them is that you get feedback fast and early. So if you're, for example, a research student, I would highly recommend to here and there post certain tweets about your research to see what people in the field have to say about it. Another big thing for me is that I usually think another fellow student can help a student more than the professor. So if you learn in front of others, you can show people how you learn certain things. And I think for me, that's one of the main reasons I started this YouTube channel. That's to show how I got to where I am today and kind of show which way I took for if people want to go a similar route or they also want to study neuroscience. I think really incorporating this idea that it's okay to learn in front of others will get you quite far actually. And furthermore, we allow people to connect with our work and process. So one of the writers that I really like, Brandon Sanderson, he posts online every day how many words he's written and he also interacts a lot with his fans. And I think by doing this, we connect with not only the writer, Brandon Sanderson, but also the person, Brandon Sanderson, and how he creates his work. And at least for me, it really made me admire not only his writing but also his dedication towards his work how he gets up every day and every day he writes for a couple of hours and I find that really inspiring and I think by learning in front of others you can also inspire other people hopefully and the last tip I got from the book is don't curb your passions and this is to say that you shouldn't cut off certain passions because you think they're not worthwhile in your endeavors towards a certain career for example so I think in university we're really stimulated to choose one path. We're usually asked to choose a certain major or minor and kind of stick with that and try to really deep dive into those topics. But I think sometimes early on in our journey, we don't really know which of our passions is actually kind of gold. 
So the second book I want to recommend is a true classic and it's probably the first self-help book that I have ever read but it really changed my way to how I approach studying, how I think about learning and in which manners I learn. So it's How to Become a Straight A Student by Cal Newport. Of course the title already tells you what the book is about. It's about different studying techniques for you to get as good grades as you can. And one of the main messages of the book is this differentiation between pseudo work as Carl Newport calls it and real work. So pseudo work according to Carl Newport. So the pseudo worker looks and feels like someone who is working hard. He or she spends a long time in the library and is not afraid to push late into the night but because of a lack of focus and concentration doesn't actually accomplish much. So probably if you look around you if you're studying right now you will see a lot of people that are doing pseudo work. So at least for me when I'm studying with my friends what I notice a lot is that most people are actually talking or they're watching a certain video or they're just highlighting parts of the text but they're not actually super focused on their work. Carl Newport really talks about this phenomenon that a lot of us spend uh, 12 hours learning but we're actually just doing pseudo work and probably all of this learning could be condensed in a few hours before a lecture and after a lecture. So one of the main formulas that he then created was work accomplished is time spent times intensity of focus. So one of the things you have to focus on is not only the time you spend studying but also the focus you spend studying. And usually when you increase the latter one the amount that you have to study goes down. So I really learned from the book to instead of cram all my study work on a Sunday night to for example after every lecture go over the lecture material for half an hour and try to incorporate it. And this way actually it allowed me to have a lot of free time and still get relatively good grades. And aside of this he also has a lot of amazing study tips. So one that for me really changed the game and this is if you're doing a technical course. I really want to give this to you is to collect the problems you get over the semester. So for example every time you have a lecture usually professors go over certain problem sets and they give you the solutions. And I would write all of these down and also I would write down the problem ses sets we had to do during homework and then at the end of the semester before an exam I would make these big combined problem sets and for one week I would just go over all these problem sets. And I think this really works for technical courses because they're usually really applied and you don't have to rote memorize but you have to know how to solve certain problem sets. And by having these big problem sets and going over them I could kind of see where I stumbled or where my reasoning was wrong and then I would just go to the professor as soon as I figured this out instead of trying to shove all of this to the end of the semester and trying to think of problems that I maybe had to solve or maybe didn't and for me this really works creating these big problem sets really allowed me to see where I was good at the technical courses and where I wasn't that good still. So the last book I want to talk about is more for your mental well-being and I got it recommended by a friend last year and after I read it I really realized how important this book would have been for my student times. So the book is called Atlas of the Heart by Brene Brown and I want to start with this quote from Atlas of the Heart that I think really describes what the book is about. If we want to find a way back to ourselves and one another we need language and the grounded confidence to both tell our stories and be stewards of the stories that we hear. So in his book Brene Brown explores 87 of the emotions and she tries to give us new language to express and understand our emotions and this is because emotional granularity which is an individual's ability to differentiate between the specificity of their emotions has been shown to be correlated with how well we regulate our emotions. So if you have a higher emotional granularity, usually your ability to regulate your emotions is also better. And by being able to put different names to different situations, we are able to better understand these situations and perhaps manage them. And I think the more you're able to learn this skill during your student times, this will just really help you later in life. Also, if 
you struggle with your emotions during your work or if you have family issues. The more we understand ourselves, the better we are able to understand others. So every chapter starts with the saying places we go when dot 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 and one chapter that I personally really liked or that really resonated with me was the places we go when things don't go as planned. So the emotions we feel then are boredom, disappointment, expectations, regret, discouragement, resignation and frustration. And I personally really liked how Brene Brown explained boredom. So according to Br Brene Brown, boredom is the desire for activity that is satisfying without the ability. It can leave us feeling frustrated and restless or lethargic. And I think during my studies right now as a PhD student, I often feel this sense of tiredness and I used to kind of classify this tiredness as just being tired from the PhD. But looking at this definition and looking at the situations I've been in, a lot of times I think I was actually not tired. I was just being bored of certain parts of the work. And after this prolonged for a long time, I felt li really lethargic afterwards. And one thing I realized by classifying some of these feelings as boredom is that the solutions for this feeling is not, for example, to rest, which would be the solution in the case I was just tired. But the solution is actually to search for things that really excite me. So for example, this is going to an exercise class, watching a really good movie or being inspired in some way. And at least for me, that allowed me to manage this emotion a bit better. And I think really, if you go over this book quite carefully, you will understand yourself a little bit better and perhaps others as well. So these are the books that I personally really enjoyed. If you are missing a book that for you really changed the way you approach studying or how you think as a student, I would love to know and perhaps read it as well. So put it down in the comments below and otherwise see you next week. Bye.